With us is investigative journalist Greg Palace. GregPallas.com is the website. It's been one year since the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. We've heard so much since then. We've heard about safety bonuses being paid to transocean executives and then being donated to the uh, families that were affected. We've heard there is no more oil in the Gulf. Where do you see the situation now, one year down the line? Well, I was just there. I can tell you that there's plenty of oil there. Um, there was, uh, I was there with uh, um, Professor Rick, uh, um, Rick Steiner, who's probably the number one um, expert on oil contamination. We went down about eight inches under the sand at the beaches that BP supposedly cleaned, and there was oil. And he said that the, that, that oil, subsurface oil, runs for about 600 miles. And actually, the U.S. government came up with that number, but you just don't hear it from the uh, Happy Talk uh, Department of Interior characters, uh, and of course from BP. Uh, they had a cleanup crew out there with uh, kitty litter shovels, kid you not, uh, little kid pooper scoopers, um, clearing the surface. Um, and they told me that they were only allowed to go down a quarter inch because otherwise they would be fired for what they call digging. The idea was just to do a surface clean and what Professor Steiner called um, cleanup theater. So, you know, when the cameras come around, like my cameras, they, they look like they're doing something, but of course they aren't. Plenty of oil. Dispersants don't disperse. What they do is that they, they sink oil. They sink oil to the bottom so that parts of the Gulf are, like, uh, paved like the L.A. freeway. So if we're seeing this, this far down in the sand that there is oil, what can uh, we assume is happening in the water? Well, uh... Uh, a kind of fish holocaust. There's, there's a, a in the water column, there are droplets, uh, microscopic droplets. Can't even see them with the eye, which are uh, filled with methane, which bacteria are eating. So you get uh, methane and bacterial plumes. And bacteria breathe like any living creatures, and then they suck the air out of the water. So you have this kind of science fiction, uh, the science fiction uh, um, thing going on where fish are drowning in the water because they can't breathe. There's no oxygen in the water. And these plumes are kind of roving around, these kind of death clouds under the water are roving around the Gulf. So, and of course, the kind of economic death cloud over the Gulf Coast is happening uh, with very little compensation. Ken Feinberg, who is handling the fund, I've known him for years, and uh, a, a very seriously creepy guy who knows that his job is to make sure that BP will never have to pay that $20 billion dollars. They've only handed out a fragment of it, and that's all that's ever going to come out. Yeah, I mean, just yesterday, I think it was on CNN, I saw the manager of a, of a hotel in the Gulf basically pleading with people to just go down there for, for vacation and just yeah. to, that, that it's, everything's okay and that it's, it's time to go down. So it's clear the economic impact is still being felt. Would you eat any seafood that came from the Gulf of Mexico at this point? I wouldn't have before the spill. <laughs> if, you knew, if you knew anything about it. I worked for the city of New Orleans. I've been down there quite a bit. I mean, there's a lot of hydrocarbon in that water, as has been pointed out by BP. Um, and it's, uh, no, it's pretty bad. You see the, the surface sand cleaned around casinos and hotels. That's nice. But gamblers, it's basically for gambling down there. Uh, gamblers don't swim anyway. And their uh, trophy wives uh, dip in the pool, but I wouldn't <laughs> swim. And it's you know it's it's chancy with the uh, with the with the fish and the shrimp. Shrimp are filter feeders. Uh, oysters are filter feeders. Um, it's not exactly. Uh, it's not. It, frankly, I mean, I, I don't want to kill their industry, but it's BP that killed it. All I'm doing is reporting about it. There are a, a lot of toxins in in that water still, and they have a very very slow. Uh, you know, they, they kill slowly uh, people that eat the food and even the fish. I know I worked on the, um, I was the investigator for, uh, on the Exxon Valdez case for the owners of the property, which are the natives. And up there, the herring disappeared. It was the biggest herring fishery in the world in Alaska. And all of it was gone, just disappeared. But it didn't disappear for three years. So it was taking, as the, the poisons ran through the food chain. Right. Until there was no more then that killed off the herring. So we may not even see the full effects of this spill still for some time to come. Not only won't you see the effects, but you won't uh, see the, uh, the blame cast properly. Exxon still fights over the fact that uh, the herring was their responsibility, uh, this, you know, that they disappeared. But they say, well, it's three years after the spill. How could that have anything to do with us? I mean, the, the fishery's been there for a thousand years, 
and suddenly after the spill it's gone. Um, it, you know, it's absurd, but you're going to see BP fight all the way saying it wasn't their oil. They're going to say that the plumes are from something else. They don't exist. Will and they win? They, I mean, will they be successful with that? They have, they have plenty of money to create multi-million dollar campaigns on CNN and other news networks within days of the, of the spill. They, they have all the resources. Will they be successful in pushing that story? Well, so far. I mean, and, and of course, the whole industry's uh, con job. I mean, if you watch the PBS film, what I, the Petroleum Broadcast System, uh, they did a story on the spill in which everything was about BP's bad corporate culture. Now, I just did a three-continent uh, investigation of BP, and I will confirm that they have a terrible corporate culture of, of lying, scheming, polluting, bribing. It's pretty grim, and, and, and when they don't get their way, uh, they overthrow governments. Uh, you know, that's not an exaggeration. We just ran that on, on primetime TV in Britain. But that said, uh, you know, it's not like Chevron is lovely. And uh, Chevron, which is the number one sponsor, the world sponsor of PBS, uh, made sure that they had a program on PBS which exculpated them completely, whereas Chevron's operations in the Gulf and elsewhere are really pretty dreadful. I just well, let, let me ask you this. I want to get I know you were you were in uh, in Baku and I want to get yes. to that to that story. Yes. But real quick, w when Fox News mentions a story from the Wall Street Journal, they always say owned by the, you know, the parent company of this network. When CNN and Anderson Cooper were doing all the coverage of the Gulf oil spill, much of it was good coverage in some senses. Did, is there not a responsibility to say, and by the way, this company we're talking about is giving us tons of money so that during the commercials there's pro-BP ads? Is that not some responsibility there to say that? Well, I think that people see the ads, whereas PBS people don't know it's, it's a Chevron-sponsored show. <laughs> but the, 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 my big problem with, with a CNN is that they do news on the cheap. They take the material that's handed to them by BP or BP fronts except at the very beginning where they get very tough because people are watching them. But for example, you'll have on, uh, on these shows, and I was thinking now of, of NPR, National Petroleum Radio, they had on all these scientists saying, well, you know, everything's been cleaned up um, and there won't be any long-term damage um, in, uh, to the fish. Well, they did not identify there was this doctor named Hazen. They didn't identify Hazen as a guy who was given a half billion dollars. That's not half a million, half billion dollars to pass out in grants by BP. And they didn't identify this as, as the guy who's a scientist who's gotten more money from, uh, than, uh, from BP than anyone in the world. Right. This is the problem. And plus, they get all this. So they get this kind of jive stuff that's kind of uh, VP, you know, VPNs, which is the video press releases, VPRs. Um, and uh, so it's kind of prefab canned reporting. So you don't get the real investigative reporting, which is needed on this story. Real quick, in the last minute or two we have left, you traveled in December to uh, Baku, the Azerbaijan capital. You investigated a previous BP blowout, which we actually found out about. I originally found out about it through WikiLeaks, of all places. Yes. Um, it, tell me, give me the quick explanation of would, could, this most recent oil spill have been prevented had the initial one 17 months ago or 17 months prior uh, been more reported on? Well, if BP hadn't covered it up, I have no doubt that 11, the 11 guys on the Gulf rig would be alive. Hmm. It was almost an identical blowout in the Caspian. I traveled there, got arrested by the uh, police state for trying to report on it. Um, there was, you know, that is the quick set cement gave out and failed. Obviously, since there's a blowout, the blowout preventers must have failed as well. Uh, we didn't hear about it because BP did everything they could to conceal it. If they hadn't concealed it, I doubt that even our brain-dead government and regulators would have allowed them to use that, that penny-pinching quick-set cement or allowed them to rely on blowout preventers, which they knew had already failed. BP lied by concealment. They testified five months before... The and that they've had no problems. They told the SEC that there was just some gas leak under their platform. They've never admitted to a blowout. And if they had, I'm quite sure 11 guys would be alive and, and uh, you know, half a million birds.
Well, you're doing some great uh, work into this. Greg Palace, gregpalace.com is the website. Thanks so much for joining us on short notice, and we'll, we'll follow up with you about this again. Anytime, David. Thank you.